Hey there, and welcome back to another She-Hulk video. And today, I want to talk about the latest episode to drop, episode 5, Mean Green and Straight Poured Into These Jeans. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what it is about this show. At times, I love it, and then at times, I just don't. And I think the story itself is perfectly fine, and the side characters are great, and the script, and everything's good, except She-Hulk. I just find her very dull, at least compared to the majority of the other characters. It often just feels like she's there which is not something you want from the title character. When she's in the scene, you should care. Care the most about her, but I don't. To me, everything else in the show, for the most part, seems fine, and so I really do hope she gets some more characterization, some more story progression. Anything to make her stand out from the crowd, because it hasn't happened yet. But of course, this is just the halfway point. I'm not going to give up just yet, but it needs to start soon. But anyway, with all that being said, let's jump into the episode. So we start off the episode with a montage of Jennifer slowly coming to regret not getting the trademark on the She-Hulk name, and her slowly becoming more and more jealous that it's been usurped by somebody else, because it's her name. Her thing. Maybe she doesn't like it, but it's hers. Hands off. She sees it on TV, driving to work on billboards, as the sponsor for the podcast she listens to in the car. And not even when she's peacefully sitting at home on the couch is she safe, as her cousin Ched bursts in with a bunch of She-Hulk merch, that he needs her to sign so he can peddle it for even more money. And of course, after he realizes what's happened, even he says that she should have known to trademark her name. After all, she is a lawyer. Shouldn't she know these things? And so, if your life decisions look dumb even to Ched, you know you've really screwed the pooch. And I think even she knows it, because at this point, all she does is just screams into her pillow. And so Nikki and Jen head down to She-Hulk by Titania, launch party... An exclusive store, perhaps? I don't know. But they're there to confront Titania and get her to stop the lawsuit and give up on this brand name. And of course, it doesn't work, because why would it work? Jen really just needs to go to court to get this settled. I mean, how could she have possibly thought that this selfish person was going to both give up the lucrative name and also not try to stop other people using it, just because she asks her to? Also, Nikki remains my favourite character in this show. She really just owns this whole scene, even as a side character compared to Jen. Just so many great one-liners and walking in with confidence, shaming Jen's lack of beauty product knowledge, taking all the free samples, questioning how weak Jen is to actually take the photo for Titania and that other fan. Yeah, Jen needs to get some confidence up. Although, I don't think this episode's going to be great for that. Back in the office, Jen continues to brood about how she doesn't even care about the name She-Hulk. It's just, it's more the principle of the matter. And now somebody's trying to take it away from her, so she's desperate to keep it. Kind of like a child who stops playing with a toy and then gets mad when someone else tries to play instead. But, okay. Anyway, as Nikki laments that all of Titania's products are so expensive and have priced her out of the market, Pug arrives asking for a favour. Kicking off the best part of the episode, the Pug and Nikki fashion side plot. Anyway, he reveals he's a massive sneakerhead and he needs her to stand in line with him to buy a second pair of Iron Man 3s as they're limited to one per customer. And in exchange... She needs his help in getting some custom clothes made for Jen. Custom clothes that actually look good on her. And so the two make their way down to a boba tea joint that Pug's dealer says is a front for a superhero clothing store. Which it is, but not the kind they need. As this guy sells knockoff Avengers merch for teams like the Avengers, which features a purple Hulk, a red-haired Thor with a shovel, a Captain America with a bald eagle on his shield instead of a star, Blonde Hawkeye, and is that a red scorpion on Black Widow's suit? Oh, and a colour-swapped Iron Man. Plus, they have an Avengers shirt too, which sadly has the same pictures. Bit lazy. But anyway, this is one of my favourite scenes of the episode. It's just... just perfect. But anyway, they still need an actual custom clothing guy for the superheroes. And so in exchange for buying a complete ensemble each from this guy, he gets them the hookup. And the designer, James, gives them an appointment for Jen to attend. And speaking of Jen, she's currently in a meeting with Holloway, who just wants to get this lawsuit over and done with. He paid for She-Hulk. He wants She-Hulk. He doesn't want a lawsuit. And so, he wants it dealt with. So he calls in the big guns, and the case is given over to the lawyer with a chip on her shoulder. And who really just tears Jen apart all scene. But in a fun way. Implying she's not a good lawyer. Mocking her for somehow being outmaneuvered by Titania of all people. And then just tearing apart her dress sense in one of the funnier moments of the episode, before summoning Nikki into the office so they can keep stomping on her confidence even more. Although, 
She does need to get her head in the game and realise that these people are often right and that she is often wrong. She did it with Bruce. She didn't believe she'd have to be a hero, but she did. She didn't believe Nikki about the press, but it turns out Nikki was right. I guarantee that her dad's going to be right. She should have reported those thugs. And now, they're right about her clothes. She needs new clothes. But anyway, we then cut to our first court session, where Titania hits Jen with a nice early burn, laughing at her oversized suit and calling her Shrek. And then, it turns out Jen's lawyer is actually good at her job, which is refreshing, and instantly gets in Titania's head and makes her look stupid. But since they don't have much evidence of her using the name beforehand, it still doesn't look all that good for Jen. But speaking of looking good, she has her appointment with the fashion designer who's pretty annoyed that he's only going to be making business suits, but who's drawn in by the appeal of having to work through the need to have it fit both Jen and She-Hulk without losing its shape. Regardless, she's still a bit demoralised by his cruelty towards her, but Nikki tells her that in the fashion world, it's cool to be mean. Before they return to the office, only to find her lawyer standing around with the creepy superhero fetish guy that she had dinner with last episode. And through an astounding lack of will or self-respect, she agrees that they should go out for drinks again soon. But at least this reminds her that she made a dating profile for She-Hulk. And thus, she has a bunch of men she can bring in as witnesses who dated She-Hulk, even though it's going to be absurdly embarrassing for her. And so, even though she's obviously going to win the case for the sake of the story, I still think she's taking a major L here. Or at least, a major L to the old self-esteem. I mean, simply the about section on her profile is enough to make one die of shame. Mean, green, straight poured into these jeans. Oh my god. Who would write that? Premium cringe. And so yeah, her witnesses make her look pretty awful. Or at least show that she has an astounding lack of judgement. The first musclehead guy says that she seemed arrogant and seemed like a bit of a tryhard, but indeed presented as She-Hulk. The second guy says she referred to herself as She-Hulk in the third person, which he found grating, and honestly true. And the third guy, Mr. Fanboy, recounts how she was embarrassed by the name She-Hulk, but then came to embrace it, and opened up to him. Ugh. And then the fourth guy, Mr. Hunky Doctor, speaks about how she was actively fighting demons on their date, and how he and She-Hulk had an intense connection showing that she really was embracing the persona. And then he reveals that he would not have gone on the date if he knew what she looked like in real life. Whew. That's a massive blow to the self-esteem. Deep cringe. Oh. And of course, now everybody feels like shit about that, except Titania. Because, you know, who wouldn't? It's so harsh to say. And so, the judge rules in favour of Jen, shutting down Titania's production using the brand name, and ordering all products recalled. Titania rages, calls her a hater, swears revenge, all that good stuff. And then she storms off with the muscle dude, saying that he can buy her things. So, looks like she's got a new sugar daddy. Jen then has some awkward eye contact with the doctor guy, and, well, everybody leaves. And, hell, even the lawyer who didn't like her originally thaws up to her a little bit, telling her that she deserves better and agrees to even have a drink with her, and continues to build up her confidence and tries to restore some of that lost self-esteem before becoming a little bit weirded out that Jen considered them friends that early, and then insults her fashion choices again. Baby steps, I suppose. But then on the other hand, the way she interacted with her in this scene, it still was a lot nicer than she would have spoken to her at the start of the episode. So, there's that. And so then she returns to her suit guy, who's improved his mood, probably because he's proud of his masterpieces, and has crafted her a new suit, as well as a new super suit. But we don't get to see it this episode, so that's a bit of a bummer. But at least we got a bit of a cliffhanger tease for Daredevil, with James having been working on his helmet, so that's exciting. And of course, that's where the episode ends. Oh, this show is too short. Just when you get to the good stuff, it abruptly ends, just like that. And honestly, it's really holding it back. But as always, these have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.